what's going on YouTube? It's your boy Troll Fontaine of Troll Fontaine Music. And we're back on Pro Tools 10. And we're just going to be covering the basics. The first thing I want to show you right quick is the, uh, the clip uh, little band over here. Now, this is where you'll find uh, audio clips that you can import. You can also um, hold down Alt and click to preview sound. You can also drag and drop audio directly to an available track. Okay, so let's say, for example, if I was to hold down the Alt button and click on where it says VIP drum loop here. As you can see, I can preview the sounds right from that menu just by holding the Alt and the Click button. Also, can grab a loop and I can drag it onto an available track as I just uh, did here. Now, another thing you can do, you can zoom in by holding Control and the bracket keys. I'll zoom in on that a little bit more so we can have a better uh, visual aspect of that. You can go over here. You can select where it says expanded transport. You can create your pre-roll. As you can see, the pre-roll icons show here. So whenever you play, or rather if you're auditioning a sound, as you can see, it gives you that little, that little space actually before it starts to play. You can also come over here and you can select a, uh, you can show the sub counter. So if you wanted to see your track, if you want to know where you were as far as uh, minutes and seconds, because you might want to know exactly how long your track is. Above here on the main, this is bars and beats. It's going to go one bar, two bar, three bars, four bars, et cetera, et cetera. Down here, this is going to be minutes, and this is going to be seconds. OK, we're going to take that expanded transport up. I'm going to do that. Bring my zoom controls back. And we'll close this clip bit down. Let's get into actually creating some fades. Now in the edit menu, or rather the edit uh, menu where there, there's a command tab and the dialog menu comes up where you can select different kinds of fades as well as preview the fades before actually applying them to a region. So if I was to, let's say, slice up a region here by pressing Control and E. And then let's say if we wanted to fade this region with this region, because you know when you slice regions, a lot of times you get clicks and pops. You want to put a fade there. You can go under fades, create. Okay, and this dialog box comes up where we actually can choose different kinds of fades. I'm gonna go ahead and choose this fade here. You can you can choose a uh, a standard curve, an S curve. You can have an equal power gain or equal gain. Uh, you know, basically whatever you want to do. If you want to add a little curve to the shape you can do that and the speaker icon right here is where we actually can preview the sound or rather the clip how the fade is going to sound in the clip before you actually apply it to the region down here I'm just gonna go ahead and just uh, use this one just for demo purposes and right there let me just zoom in on that a little bit more and you see that fade applied in real time now you also can go over here to your smart tools and select, we'll use the standard one here. In real time, I also can adjust these fades. You see that? So that's a handy feature. Let me go ahead and control Z that out. And right, let's get back on the grid here. And we'll zoom that out so we can get a better look at that. Now above here, you notice that I have the, uh, the time markers here. Now the time markers, you can easily add these just by using a little plus sign to the left over there. And that'll help you find your areas and your mix a lot um, faster. What you do is you go down here to uh, your memory locations. And for example, the memory location box comes up now. If I was to press verse one, that's, that's right where I'm at right here. As you can see, it's labeled. And if I was to go to chorus, I can fly over there to chorus. If I was to go to verse two, I'll fly over here to verse two. Okay, so that's a great way to get through your mix like really quick. I mean, you do have this, this icon here where you actually can you know, scroll through your mix in real time by using that. So that's another handy tool that you, you might want to really get um, familiar with. Also, you have a tempo lane here where you can take your pencil tool, if I use a freehand, you can actually use automation 
and draw in the tempo changes like that. You know, you see the tempos changing. So that's great if you want to change, you know, certain parts of tempos in your mix. All right, let's go ahead and uh, take a look actually creating some groups. Let's control equal, we'll go to the next screen here. Let's say, for example, if I want to control this kick along with these other kicks all at one time. You can make a track active by highlighting that arrow and now it becomes active. Or if you needed to deactivate a track to save CPU power, you just would hit make it active and it, it just grays it out like that. So let's say if I was to take this kick, hold down the shift key all the way to this kick. Now every one of these little regions is now, or rather every one of these tracks is now highlighted. What you do is you go over here to where it says groups, you create new group. Okay, the group dialog box comes up. Now here is currently what's in the group, what you'll see highlighted down below. Now we can add other tracks by highlighting a track here and we will just press add. I'll just, I'll just do one for fun. I'll just add the hi-hat on there and you can name the group. So if I label it kick and high, just like that. This is just for demo, of course. I wouldn't I wouldn't really do it like that. Click OK. Now you notice over here in the group menu, the kick and the high is now there. So now when I touch these faders, they all move at the same time. Now of course the high track is not down here because that was a, a previous track I had to leave it, but you know you get the idea. All those faders are now moving at the same time. And if you need a more precise control over that, you can hold down the, I believe it's what, the click button? I mean, uh, the uh, control button. And you see they move a lot slower. Now, if you unhighlight this region, they now move, you know, as normally as they would independently. And let's see if I can solo save my mic here. If I was to select all, group all, you notice how all these change to all. And now when I move this region, well, I thought I could, I thought I could solo save my mic, but I can't turn it down too much because it'll kill the audio. But you see how you can get an overall control over everything at one time, and that's how you set your uh, your groups. Now I'll slide this down a little bit more. And over here is your, is your track view. Your track view is basically where you find all of your audio and your plugins, whether it's R Jazz VST. Uh, TDM or instruments on um, the dots to the left of it. It's just basically showing you what tracks are actually high or rather what's active. So if you want to hide tracks, you can just take these little dots and click them off like that and tracks disappear. For example, where I had the hi hat track disappear, we was mentioning a second ago. It appears now. So that's how you um, can hide your tracks. We went over to clip view. I showed you how to create groups. We went over markers. I showed you how to do the tempo. Another thing you might want to get familiar with is your undo history. Okay, you get this menu that comes up. And basically, um, this can be a useful tool if you need to retrace your workflow. You know, you can undo it all. You can create the cache or you can just show certain times in your mix. Okay. Also, some other great tools that you might want to get familiar with. Let's go under Time Operations. You can move the song Start right here. As you can see right here, it has zero actually before the first bar. So then that way when the song starts, there's like an actual little pause. Before the, uh, the intro actually comes in. That gives someone a little time to, you know, to, to get a little prep, a little count off on if they want to be recording something live, you know, instead of just having to just jump right into the mix. Another great thing that you can do to your mix is on your master fader track. Now you might say, what's the purpose of this? I'm going to be talking about a little tape saturation. Tape saturation, I guess you could say it gels your mix together a little bit better in some ways. For example, if you want to give that natural slight compression, that's going to tame the audio peaks. Um, for example, if you're recording to a tape, now no one records the tapes anymore, I know, but 
you know, in this digital world, sometimes you're making it sound, you know, a little too clean, a little too perfect. You might want to give it a little grit, a little dirt. Um, tape saturation is a great way to give your mix that warm effect to the track, that analog, you know, not perfect distortion effect. So I just figured out I'd mention that also, you know, if that helps, helps you out. For example, let's see if I have any, I think I have a tape plugging in here. I know I definitely got one on harmonic. Let's see. Yeah, I have one right in there. Now with the FPS rate, the the uh, what is it? The uh, the GUI is not gonna be spinning as fast as it would as I see here. You guys are gonna see it moving kind of glitchy, but this is just to give you an idea. Okay, and it comes up like this. So a tape saturation plugin is a really great way to get that really you know, warm analog feeling uh, to your mix. You know, and you would just adjust the playback level, you know, maybe like bring it up a little bit. And another great thing about this plugin, it has these little, these little tweaks, these little screws. I don't know if anybody knows it, but these screws, if you touch these screws, you see how I'm adjusting that? It's moving the DB gain. So that's a little secret insider tip. I'm gonna go ahead and just reveal that for you guys. And with the tape saturation plugin, let's go ahead and listen to the track with that. All right, now hold it up right there. So you see it gave it a little a little grit. You know, it made it, it made it sound less digital, it made it sound less perfect than you know what it normally sounds. And we'll just take that off real quick. Alright, and I'm gonna go ahead and hold it up right there. This is your boy Joel Fontaine or Joel Fontaine Music. Be sure to come by my webpage, which is www.digitalmusic.yolosite.com. Be sure to come by and become a VIP member for only $9.99. That's no monthly fees. I repeat, no monthly fees. Unlimited downloads. So if you want 8, 9, 10 drum kits on my website, you can get them all for free once you become a VIP member. And some of those drum kits on my site, you know, I sell for like 10, 15 bucks. So it's a really great way to get a lot of good free stuff because I love free stuff. When it comes to tutorial videos, I just, you know, I just don't charge for that because basically when it comes to knowledge, I believe that should be an open source, a free open source. So you'll never see me charge for tutorial videos. It's, yeah, I just don't bother with it. But you know, I charge for stuff that I, you know, provide a service for, such as drum kits. I work pretty hard on those drum kits. So, yeah, man, you know, come by the site, uh, become a VIP member. We got a lot of stuff going on over there. So you guys might want to come by the web page, which is www.digitalmusic.yolosite.com, and take a look. So uh, that's pretty much it, man. Roll Tools 10. Going over the basics, we checked out some fades, how to create fades. We checked out the undo history option. We checked out making markers so you can jump to your track. We checked out the tempo uh, feature where you can actually use your pencil tool to change the tempo, you know, if you need certain changes in your mix. We checked out how to create groups. We also checked out the clip view, how we can preview tracks from there. We checked out the track view. And we also went over a tape saturation, how to get a warmer feel uh, to your mix. We also checked out how you can move your faders, you know, with a lot more of a precise control. All right. Oh, we did also show you the sub counter. I forgot to mention that and the pre-roll. All right, so that's pretty much it, guys. I'll see you guys in the next one. You guys have a great day. Peace.